So combining fuzzy logic with this uh, ECG game, that's actually a bot that will be playing the game for us or in addition, so we could like compete compete with the robot. It has now a noise uh, option and uh, that's uh, mainly to see how well the robot is doing when the noise is increased. So currently it's just generating all these false, uh, false alarms. We will be fixing this before publishing the tool. And yes, you can still uh, play uh, yourself. So you should not click on what that one, which was a normal ECG, and this one missing a bit at the front. So we are not clicking on it. We're getting a correct uh, rejection. And when clicking on an abnormal ECG waveform, we get a hit. And that's what the bot does as well. We had a tuning of it before that just uh, works 100% of the time, but it was relying on some uh, uh, magic numbers that uh, we now removed. The system now performing much worse is essentially clicking on everything. It's uh, making a decision that everything is abnormal and we will be fixing that. We're looking at the, was it four parameters? positive peaks, the number of positive peaks, the number of negative peaks, uh, amplitude, and the R peak sharpness. So obviously now I can uh, win the, the bot, but we pretty sure can easily make it work uh, much better to the point where human can sit back, relax, and watch the robot in action. And so we have these four files, obviously this uh, HTML that you see on the screen. So the waveforms are being generated using simple math equations. Uh, this is all happening in JavaScript, so front end. And the fuzzy logic, which I'll get to in a sec, is working, working back end. So, they, so the fuzzy logic, the robot, doesn't know what the current waveform label is. Oh, the robot is cheating somehow. Uh, no, it doesn't of the labels. Now we have this uh, game logic, it doesn't do much. We might as well get the copilot to work just by explaining the code quickly. And uh, we'll try this one uh, shot uh, prompt, single shot, because it tends to work better to begin with and then performance uh, drops with uh, consecutive prompts. Yeah, we do constants, waveform functions, uh, variations. Yeah, we have a bunch of variations, as you can see, as you saw in the game itself. Generation and noise addition is also in JavaScript. And now the big reveal, the Python code. So this one has the, it's a Flask application and it does the fuzzy logic business. Game logic does quite a bit uh, initialization, drawing the game itself, so it does the scoring in the game, calculating the scores. Yeah, I probably should break it, break it up a bit, but it's, uh, yeah, 200 lines of code, it's not too bad. It does the waveform analysis, noise level adjustment, and starting the game. Now the Python code, this message is too long. Okay, so the Python code, yes, it's uh, 400 lines of code. Yeah, the bot currently as it is, it just keeps uh, saying that everything is abnormal. You can still get some points out of it. Well, because the algorithm generation, I think is biased. I think it has something around the the other thing if the uh, copilot, the code thing about it, is we can use this workspace and actually ask uh, how, uh, what's the ratio between normal and abnormal ECG waveforms? So it will um, try and find the relevant bit supposedly in all the files that are currently open. It should uh, tell you the reference as well. So it should tell you what it was uh, looking at. But yeah, it's taking some time. So it looked at the waveforms JS and the HTML file, and it didn't produce a result. 
which is unfortunate because I think it's 6040. Check. It was looking at the wrong file. I vaguely remember something about the 6040, but I can't confirm. Where's the generate waveform? Noise level. Yeah, this one, 0. 0.6. Yeah, so it is 6040. Well, that's why by clicking on every waveform, you are able to a uh, overall over longer periods of time uh, gain some points, but you won't be doing very well because you're producing all these uh, false alarms. So yes, there's the 52 to 38 uh, ratio. So yeah, this is the kind of stuff uh, Copilot is not uh, being able to handle, even though it's fairly simple. Uh, we are developing this uh, Flask application that we would like to publish today, but I need your help. Uh, we need to update the fuzzy logic algorithm parameters, as in the rules and the membership functions. We also got some examples of the ad output that I'm getting. Uh, can you look at the fuzzy logic analysis result? And uh, obviously we also having an issue with the number of uh, peaks being uh, calculated. I assume uh, this is to do with the noise. Uh, last time we were uh, trying to add a basic uh, filter, but if we do do that, we'll have to show it to the human playing the game as well to keep uh, things fair. Can you suggest the specific code changes or a uh, prompts for GitHub Copilot. So if you could uh, generate code with uh, placeholders, placeholders that uh, GitHub Copilot could uh, fill out, that would be great. Please go of, over all of the code provided and the images uploaded. For the fuzzy logic part, you need a balance of specificity and sensitivity. You don't want to tag normal variations as abnormal, false positives, nor do you want to miss actual abnormalities, false negatives. Adjust your membership functions to reflect the degree of certainty you have about a segment's abnormality based on the input variables. Yeah, uh, GPT-4. Yes, yeah, single, single shot uh, prompt. I mean, it says uh, everything seems legit. However, the code is not quite there. So it's suggesting, suggested just to rename the sharpness. Uh, that should be fine. We don't have to do it. Oh, it's actually changed it from uh, triangular to trapezoidal with a triangle triangle in the middle. Now we already have this code. I'm not sure why it's uh, generating it there uh, again. I don't think this will make much uh, difference. So a uh, comment that out. Was it a comment that that was a HPT4 suggest a suggestion and not tested. That's fine. It's doing the same for amplitude. And yes, using a trapezoidal uh, membership functions instead of triangular ones, which uh, yeah, I don't think it will make much difference. I used trapezoidal ones uh, before. They kind of make uh, more sense. But the triangle ones uh, should work just fine. I'm not sure why they decided to make these suggestions. I think it's saying a co-pilot can do the race kind of thing. Right now the rules. The rules is something we do have to go over. Now yeah, when noise is removed, so that's actually what we are trying to show is that when uh, there is no noise, the algorithm, the machine, uh, the fuzzy logic algorithm is doing much better. But it's labeling this as abnormal, which is correct. Yeah, it's now started uh, moving much slower because we, the human went a negative score. Well, that's because 
that's because I wasn't paying attention. It's a normal city, so I should get 10 points. Yeah, I'll need 12 correct responses to get back to zero. The machine is doing okay-ish. So that's after lowering the noise level all the way to zero. So the false alarms and uh, misses are at 57 and 21. Ideally, it will just stay that way. Yeah, so with no noise, uh, the fast logic uh, is doing pretty, pretty, pretty good. I think it might not be making any mistakes uh, whatsoever. So for the demo, we might just add the low amount of uh, noise where it does uh, mistakes uh, sometimes. No, it just didn't miss. So it was an abnormal uh, waveform and it didn't click on it. So it's uh, making mistakes even when there is no noise. There's some sort of basic adjustments that we need to make. The positive peaks, three and one, this, this are working okay. The amplitude doesn't look like raw amplitude. That amplitude doesn't seem to be changing at all. It's always 0.83, why? No, it changed to 0.5. Right, when you don't have the negative peak, the amplitude is changing. 0.58 seems to be the maximum amplitude, which is a bit odd. It should go to a 1 or as close to 1 as possible. Yeah, so that the amplitude is probably not... Oops. The false detection of a hand. Yeah, it's sometimes falsely detecting a hand on my ear or... Something like that, the music bit. Well, I don't know if you call it music or not. I do. <laughs> I went there. Uh, yeah, the false alarm stayed at 57. The misses went from 21 to 28. So I think it's uh, missing a very specific waveform. The thing about it is that we don't want to tune it up. Uh, you know, we, we don't have any, we don't want any magic numbers that uh, you know make the algorithm work better we want to just do just give it the general instructions and for it to just uh, do its thing let's go over those suggested rules might need to explain each one because i forgot what they do don't fit the screen as well, which is not good. Yes, yeah, so those are again the uh, GPT-4 suggestion. Don't think we will be testing this because that's not what the problem is. Right, the peak detection. It's uh, suggesting to do change the prominence value, and yes, we do have a prominence value. Uh, currently, yeah, every time you do something funny on your face, it's a, it's a prompt for me to have a break and listen to some music. Hopefully this music is not copyrighted. I'm assuming if you create the musical instrument, then the music is yours. I don't know. What do you think? Just a quick recap. We tried this uh, single, uh, what's called one shot uh, prompt of uh, GPT 4 to try and fix some uh, things with uh, this uh, fuzzy logic uh, algorithm that is playing this ECG scoring game. But it's uh, currently hallucinating a bit. I'm pretty sure one of the waveforms that uh, never detects uh, correctly that's why the misses so one of the it's always missing a one a abnormal ecg and yes i know which one it is so this is kind of unfair for me to do this because i know exactly what the waveforms are a later at a later stage we also try to add 
we can assume because this synthetic uh, ECG we can get add uh, like an infinite uh, number of uh, uh, different waveforms and see how the algorithm responds so the rules should just be uh, logical nothing fancy so I'll get the error in GPT-4 was an error generating a response obviously if I click uh, regenerate it will uh, start again it was a long prompt and a long response what if I just refresh the page and I haven't finished when it's in this continue generating position it actually gives me an uh, option to interact with it again so I don't have to continue if I do continue I suspect it will give me the same error again yes that's right so it's yeah behaving in an odd way I don't know is it just for me is it because I'm uh, on uh, using the Chrome browser in Linux I was thinking actually doing a, a tool where it's using an API and my Python just uh, prompts the GPT for whichever model just continuously non non-stop obviously monitoring the cost maybe it will be even cheaper I mean you can always cap it at whatever twenty dollars a month that the GPT-4 cost sorry for that that's how drinking sounds like it's the oven in I like the other hand much better. I was saying I have to change the hands because I'm, well, I can do both at the same time. That was the idea, but essentially I'm playing two musical instruments at the same time. I wonder if there's any musicians in the crowd who would like to test this and provide the feedback. Okay, I don't know, GPT-4 just got stuck on me. Um, yeah, there's no point asking you anything about the working the behind the scenes of how this terminal uh, actually works uh, is there so I think we will uh, just have to leave with it um, so you generated pretty generic responses I'm uh, trying to get to the specifics of the code and uh, now it seems at the moment uh, in the past we removed the frequency a metric we were looking at the frequency as a parameter and now the result of it is that we always get a miss for a certain type of uh, waveforms synthetic waveforms that have the r peak too close to the t wave and uh, this must be because we remove the frequency a component um, how would you suggest fixing it I would like a specific uh, code yeah I'm thinking should we bring uh, the frequency back the reason we removed frequency to begin with is because we are not looking at the continuous um, ECG waveform we're looking at uh, each Q rs complex uh, one at a time so it kind of didn't make sense to look at frequency but obviously now it seems like that might have been a mistake because uh, if the r peak is moving around being to uh, coming too quickly or coming too late uh, we don't have a detection uh, mechanism for that we could of course uh, look at distances between peaks but then we'll have to make an assumption um, assumptions as to which peak is which and uh, also if we have a missing peak that would not uh, work as well any suggestions are welcome uh, one of the peaks uh, might be missing so how do we deal with that when uh, calculating intervals how would you make an assumption which uh, peak is which and which one is missing so suggesting to add these four intervals that yes it's uh, we have similar stuff obviously in the waveform generation 
we have these two QRS variations. So one of them will have a gap between, uh, so the R peak comes uh, late. However, the fast logic algorithm, the bot, the machine that is playing the game, uh, should not know about how the waveforms were generated by suggesting adding three more parameters. I don't think this will work because, uh, again, some of the waveforms might be missing some of the peaks. Not might, they are missing some of the peaks. Yeah, so we're implementing a fuzzy logic system to analyze some data. Yeah, it doesn't know what data we are looking at, even though we could have looked at the names likely related to ECG readings. Okay, it did do that. To actually read the whole thing, don't you? Fuzzy logic is a form of a many valued what logic in which the true values of variables may be any real number between zero and one. Yeah, so all the numbers have to be normalized, which is, I don't think that's the case at the moment. Well, especially not when we have noise, then the number of positive peaks just shoots up through the roof. Yeah, when we remove the noise, it just uh, gives the correct uh, number of positive and negative peaks. Might first sort out the no noise situation. That will kind of make sense. Uh, we had a frequency component. Sorry, I keep repeating the same thing over and over again, but that's important. That's uh, why our system is not working at the moment. Let's suggest that uh, looking at uh, calculating uh, intervals. The thing is, uh, Python code is already 400 lines of code, so I'm not sure if we should uh, add the uh, extra parameters or not. I think it's uh, suggesting uh, uh, three parameters. If we measure, if we are calculating the QRS uh, detection, do we still need the R peak uh, sharpness to be calculated? Yes, yeah, so the intervals are nice. Then uh, we asked uh, what happens if uh, one of the peaks is missing. Now suggesting to calculate intervals with missing data, an additional function. Obviously, every time you ask for something, it generates a, an additional function. So can I make sure I understand what you mean? If I have, do I still need... No, but look by looking at the inputs of these functions, the answer would be yes, that I do still uh, need them both. It just inflates my code. So after the suggestion changes, uh, how many parameters we will be looking at. So we're adding another function. Assuming waveform is numpy array, calculate the intervals between peaks, for example intervals between R peak in the ECG. No, we do not have intervals between R peak because we're looking at individual PQRST. No, so that's no good. That's the peak detection logic. Do have that function. Why do you stuff up the name? Yeah, we have peaks mentioned 174 times. It's just a variable, is it? Yeah, we just have them in uh, process data. Can we have it in a separate function? Over here. It's a placeholder. This is not being called. Uh, Can Copilot do anything useful? By the way, just a reminder, all the tools we make are available on bionicchaos.com. Go check them out. And uh, don't forget to leave your comments. Okay, a couple of things with the code that we currently have. We need to fix it and integrate it properly. Um, can you help with that? Ideally, just uh, regenerate the whole code. If it's too much, regenerate functions. If uh, that's too much, uh, give instructions for GitHub Copilot to do it. And we want to make sure that with a noise level uh, set to zero, the fuzzy logic algorithm doesn't make any mistakes. I think for that, 
we need to sort out that uh, frequency uh, component or which sorry for that noise so for which uh, we have I think instead of frequency we now have the distance the time between the different peaks but it's not uh, currently being fully integrated we need to add the membership functions for it and the rules for the additional parameters um, are you can you do it yourself or provide prompts for github copart whichever way you prefer by the way if you feel like being funny or something uh, go for it but probably not too funny it's something really wrong with the text window with the window we insert the prompt yep you yeah, would expect it to uh, scroll automatically to the bottom or something but it doesn't do that generating might take a while yeah I mean we have been do, working on this tool for quite some time yeah that's the one that's always being missed so that's the one we always get the uh, miss for currently yeah we're not plotting anything in Python so we can comment uh, the matplotlib pyplot out yeah, everything else is correct yes we have this flask application have the analyze waveform have uh, data processing might save a copy of this quickly ah git is uh, not properly working because i mean eventually we i don't mind for the whole project to be on github but uh, it's just gonna be an absolute mess so essentially what you see on the website is trying to deal with that mess there's um, a lot of tools that are actually not being listed that are under development you can go to them if you know the URL like the bot currently this one would not be working uh, because we haven't added it as a flask application yet so we don't do frequency anymore and processing the data we should calculate intervals as well after existing peak detection yeah we have it for debugging at the moment the plotting is tough but i'm not i don't think it will actually work at the moment or maybe it will I have to bring that plot function back yeah, so this is uh, how the current uh, detection detection works. We'll just keep uh, overlaying stuff. This is the type of uh, waveforms that we have. Yeah, so at this noise level, it's found uh, 35 positive peaks, which is obviously not correct. Yeah, this will keep uh, this will keep popping up. Okay, so finding the a uh, peaks and doing the amplitude calculation printing it out as well we are not normalizing it because this is essentially dividing by 600 we'll do the normalization yeah we're not returning process data i'm doing it for any other parameters and uh, no you doing extra extra hours yeah that's uh plot it's trying to plot still that's okay now yes yeah, so we're running this application uh only locally at the moment yeah we better not uh, do this again because it's uh plotting stuff uh in the back end it breaks the the flow of the software yeah it's okay to 
in the intervals I need to add them in here where does it get the frequency from it should be intervals yeah that is for whatever reason being generated at the DC level of 300 so we actually reduce it back to to zero that's instead of uh, detrending yes we could use a fancy detrending algorithm as well do we have frequency currently yeah, the amplitude is not normalized anymore you can get rid of that don't have frequency abnormality is now called abnormality score and we also produce a decision so it's a yes no normal abnormal a decision yeah i wasn't sure about this auto uh, generation of uh, membership functions i don't think we need this where's uh yeah, process that uh, we have the intervals and the intervals should be returned oops yes intervals that's right yeah don't need that line let's do uh, some music and recap the calculate intervals function is it giving a different function every time and this is better this is um, a covering a case where there is no r peak for example i need to modify get rid of that yeah, and fuzzy logic analysis that's the tricky business yeah, so we don't have rr interval because it's not continuous waveform hey can we rewrite this function uh, taking into account the newly added parameters that are uh, to do with the time a uh, distance interval between uh, um, the different peaks uh, getting confused here again just to make sure we are clear we are reviewing every individual p q r s t waveform at a time so doing an r r interval would not make any sense instead we would like to be able to detect if the r peak is too close to the p wave or the t wave within the one complex why the rt and pr intervals antecedent variables do not go all the way to one but zero point to one instead also with the rules instead of adding four new rules is there a way combining them all considering the output for all of them for the abnormality is said to be likely I shared both uh, the current Python code that we have and the game logic uh, JavaScript as well. Probably the JavaScript needs some adjustment considering we added uh, more parameters to the mix. Can you review the whole code and uh, explain why potentially we're getting this uh, error? Yeah, we're getting a bit confused now. Yeah, the more prompts uh, we are doing, the less uh, bang for the buck we are getting. There's something wrong now. Can we actually get the GitHub Copilot to do this instead? Might use the workspace function because we don't actually know uh, where do we we need to make the change essentially we added uh, more parameters 
more features to look at. Right, so process data. Sometimes it provides these links that are very helpful so that I don't have to search for the code. So we're calculating the intervals here somewhere. Yes, and we're not, we were not doing this correctly. This is still not correct, but this is better. Yeah, get rid of the print statement. We will display it on the front page eventually, so we'll need to change the HTML code as well. I'll share it with you in a second. It should be just called MP data, and we don't need that. Can we just update? Well, it's updating. It should be looking at the previous code or any changes we made. No, it's not doing that. Let's well get rid of it. Oops. Talk about print interval. P sorry, PR interval. Yes, that's what we want. Then RT interval. So this is correct, and we returning all that. So that's fine. Then calculate intervals. It's not a hypothetical function. It's an actual function. So we're adding them to the dictionary before passing on. Let's do the same thing again with a workspace function. Update the fuzzy logic analysis function to use these new intervals as inputs to the fuzzy system. Let's see if it can find the relevant code. We'll give GPT-4 a bit of a break just so we also don't hit the 40 messages per three hour limit. So it's still searching for stuff. We'll ask it eventually to give an overview for what we have so far. It's getting stuck. We get it to work twice. Request timeout. What? It's a weird uh, server error. No, this one is not doing anything in fuzzy logic analysis. That's where the function is. But we can do that to select the whole code. No, we cannot. We're not doing the calculation in this function. We have this funny default rule that I thought we got rid of. We're not actually... No, we are using it. So we have those six rules, a default rule, and rule for abnormal intervals. So essentially, if they're too short or too long, the abnormality of the signal is highly likely. Test this again. We still get an error. Yeah, calculate auto, uh, calculate intervals should take uh, one positional argument, but two were given. That's not good. I think this might be something for a copilot to sort out. And because we don't know where it is in the code, we just uh, use the workspace function. So it uh, tries to find it itself. I mean, yeah, GPT-4 is so much better with these things. Or well, pretty much anything. Okay, in calculate intervals, we have the... It's not in calculate intervals. I mean this one. No, it's just initializing an array. I want to do an... Oops. Yeah, interval type. Oh, it's okay. We're not using interval type. Okay, that should be fine. Now we actually need to use the interval type. Interval type is not being used. I think we need to rewrite the whole thing. Returning intervals. Yeah, now it's doing um, the interval between R and T wave and P and R wave instead of R, R, which we don't have because we're looking at uh, each uh, PQRST uh, complex individually. So this should be better. Still getting an error. Might pop it into a GPT-4. If I select the whole code, it might tell me that the code is too long. No, it's dealt with it. 500 lines in analyze waveform. Now it's not getting the links, which is pretty annoying. Have the analyze waveform. Can actually do this for me. It's only taking one line of code. That's not good. I need to make sure that uh, 
PR interval is in the JSON response and it's not and GitHub Copilot is more corrected. Yeah, interval should be there. Actually, interval should be there. It's it response data. Uh, this one's a bit odd. Yeah, now we're having another problem. Every time you fix something, you break something else, don't you? Yeah, I'm not entirely sure how to prompt a copilot in terms of uh, giving it the code. What code does it need? I'm comparing it into converting the there's something in the dictionary format. Uh, what's being returned here? Yeah, I think it's a jobby for a GPT. Okay, I'll be sharing the whole code that we currently have for the Python Flask application that does the fuzzy logic analysis. We also get this error. Maybe you could quickly sort it for us. Hopefully it's nothing to do with the JavaScript. No, it shouldn't be. So I'll give the entire code and uh, could you also provide a summary for the whole thing? Uh, the changes that we have made today they should be the, the previous code should be still commented out in the script if you wish to be funny or something make uh, general comments suggestions uh, go for it it might be thinking for a while yeah, I'm not sure how much progress we made today currently the application is not uh, running properly. The robot is not uh, generating any output. So we're getting a silly error. Can we summarize the whole application so far? Give it a broader context. If you feel like being funny, go for it. But not too funny. Definitely do not use any emojis. No, every time I say this, it's actually picking up on the actual word and starts, uh, will start to actually generate emojis. Uh, give a general context for the application, how it might be useful or not. We already have um, the game published on our website, uh, but this one will uh, obviously provide extra features where you play against the machine. All right, let's step back and look at the big picture of your application with a touch of lightheartedness, but not too much to throw us off course. Imagine this, you've got a game, not just any game, but one where humans and machines face off in the grand arena of ECG waveform analysis. Picture it as a, whose line is it anyway? But for ECG waveforms, where the points do matter, players, likely healthcare professionals or enthusiasts, get to test their skills in identifying abnormalities in ECG waveforms. It's like playing a medical version of, where's Waldo? But instead of Waldo, you're looking for sneaky little changes in those squiggly lines. Here's where your code steps in, flexing its fuzzy logic muscles. It's like having a robot judge in a talent show, but instead of judging singing, it's judging the peaks and valleys of heartbeats. The machine uses sophisticated algorithms to analyze these waveforms, considering factors like peak sharpness, interval lengths, and amplitudes. Basically, it's looking for the heartbeat's rhythm and style. Players are presented with a waveform and have to decide whether it's normal or abnormal. Each decision is a gamble, like choosing door number one or two in a game show, but with more medical credibility at stake. Meanwhile, the machine, your Python backend, does its own analysis. It's like having Sherlock Holmes, but instead of solving crimes, he's deducing heart conditions. The machine's verdict is based on fuzzy logic, which is a fancy way of saying it makes decisions in a very human-like, somewhat uncertain way. It's not just about zeros and ones, it's about, maybe this peak is too sharp, or, perhaps this interval is too long. Our application is not just a simple game. It's an educational tool, a training simulator, and a way to introduce people to the complexities of ECG interpretation. It's like combining a game of chess, a medical seminar, and a detective novel all into one. You've got peak detection, interval calculations, and amplitude analysis. It's like the machine is putting on its detective hat and magnifying glass to scrutinize every heartbeat. The integration of fuzzy logic adds a layer of sophistication, like adding a plot twist to a mystery novel. The JavaScript front end makes it interactive and engaging, because what's the point of having a cool game if it's not fun to play? Dealing with errors and making sure the data passed around is in the right format. It's like making sure all the actors in a play know their lines and cues. Your application is a bridge between gaming and medical education, turning the daunting task of ECG analysis into an interactive learning experience. It's like if Grey's Anatomy met, who wants to be a millionaire? 
equal parts educational, thrilling, and potentially life-saving. So, while there might be some hiccups along the way, like our current error situation, remember, every great invention had its share of tuning. Once this is all ironed out, you're not just launching a game, you're launching a new way to learn, engage, and possibly save lives. No pressure, right? Winking face.